Hey, what's up, my guys? How you guys doing today? It's nice to see you guys back here for another for another video. <laughs> uh, nice to see you guys back here. Look at my new look at my new jacket. It's nice. It's cold. You know, it's four in the morning here. Windows wide open. I should probably close that. I don't know how this how this sounds on there or whatever. But here we are. <laughs> so today I'm be I'm a little bit that thing. So today I'm gonna be giving you guys 10 things to consider when doing a catering event or go, you're deciding to cater for someone or you wanna cater for someone or someone asks you to cater for them. I'm gonna give you guys 10 things to consider and well, let's get to it. Let's talk chef. So the first thing to consider whenever doing anything, honestly, is money, the budget. Of course, the client dictates this budget or dictates how much money they're willing to spend. And this, of course, is going to decide on the factor of of how much you could buy or how much you could do for this event. It, it also provides a range of, of affordability for this event. Now, within this budget, you're going to figure out how much it's going to be for a price per person. You know, you're gonna have to figure out how much, how many people are gonna attend, but that's that's another thing to consider. We'll get to that one when we get to it. But essentially figuring out the budget is gonna determine the whole factor of whether you could do this or not. You know, if they set too low of a budget and they expect way too much, from personal experience and from my advice to you guys, honestly, would just be don't do it. You know, just if they're a friend of yours, you know, just, you know, let them know that, you know, that's not realistic. Or if you're trying to help them out, I get it. You know, trying to build a name for yourself. I get it. But when it comes to spraying yourself a little bit too thin with money, there's going to be a lot of disappointments and there's going to be a lot of things you'll overlook because of that. And we don't want to do that. The second thing to consider will be the size of the party. How many people are going to join? See, we, we got there. We got there. Now we're talking about it. <laughs> so the size of the party. So how many people are going to be served? Like who is there? Are we going to have to serve the band? Are we going to have to serve the staff that's there too, that you guys provide that they, well, they provide, obviously we're going to have to serve the customers. So it's really three, three things we have to worry about under the people that we're serving. You know, are we also going to serve if this is like a formal event or like a wedding, the clergy people that are there, are we going to have to feed the cleaning crew, the cleaning crew? <laughs> are we gonna have to feed them all these little factors that we're gonna have to figure out how many people are gonna attend now usually when they give you that number i like to personally give like a 10 to 15 percent cushion on top of that just in case people don't show up or there's extra people there that are unaccounted for which really there shouldn't be but sometimes it happens sometimes it happens um but i like giving myself that 10 to 15 percent cushion on how many people are going to come now the third thing that i would recommend you consider is the number of courses you know how many courses are we going to have throughout this entire thing you know is it going to be a multi-course or a single course you know like how much food do we need right essentially how many different items how many different plates do i need to make you know like certain stuff like that and when determining the number of courses that you're going to have it's also going to help with the with the equipment that you're going to need to bring right that with the equipment you're going to be need to use that's all going to tie into that how many we're going to have three courses okay so i should bring i should bring extra plates or i should bring an extra shaper you know like extra stuff to extra heat sources to keep those shapers warm you know i should bring more more salt i don't know stuff like that you know that helps determining how much you're going to need of a certain item like this would also help with knowing the courses like how many like if i have a salad course and i have later on i have something like an ice cream course or dessert course that needs to be made there and then i should know about this you know prior so this way i bring the necessary equipment to serve those items and not only serve them but to be able to prepare them to be able to keep them cool until the time i need them you know until they need to be served because i'm not going to bring ice cream and then serve it four hours later it's gonna be all melted you know i don't bring i don't bring anything to keep it cold essentially you know now the fourth thing to consider is the type of meal like is it gonna be a sit-down meal or is it gonna be a buffet like what we're like what are we doing you know like are they gonna come and serve themselves or are we gonna have to serve them you know so this way it also it also ties back with the third one you know like the number of courses because if we're serving it then i'm gonna need the staff necessary to serve that item 
serve the food but if they're all coming as buffet style then okay i need like two to three people just watching the buffet you know just making sure everything is organized everyone's not being all crazy all all on top of it and stuff like that it's less equipment needed depending on the type of meal depending how everything's going to be set up how the presentation is going to be like am i going to have platter presentations or is it going to be plates it's just very you know just try to figure that out first now the fifth thing to consider would be any dietary restrictions any special any special dietary needs you know like is it depending on religious people that are going depending on their religion that they can't eat certain items or a lifestyle choice that they can't eat this so you know you want to be able to provide food for all those type of people whether they're vegetarian vegan and all this other stuff you want to know all that information so you have the food necessary to feed those type of people you know you don't want anyone generally to go hungry you don't want you don't want nobody you don't want somebody they're not eating because then you know you're not doing your job you're not feeding the people that are supposed to be fed at that event and then there's some people that you know can't eat certain items because of the dietary needs you know dietary problems or health problems health issues and stuff like that so you don't want to have that account have that issue on your hands and it'd be your fault because they didn't tell you that someone is lactose intolerant or has a lactose allergy and now they're sick and stuff is happening and now it's all you you know that's why you need to know all this stuff beforehand before even agreeing to anything so this way you're prepared you know you're able to make maybe little cards to say hey this has some lactose don't eat it <laughs> stuff like that now the sixth thing that you're gonna want to know obviously something that you really want to consider is the time of service you know what time are we going to be feeding these people what time am i going to have to have all this prepared by because this will dictate one setup time two prep time three when we're going to fire all this stuff essentially make all this stuff four how long we could hold these items for until they're no longer good or they're dying um, essentially going bad and then obviously service time when we're serving and then lastly when we're closing up you know when when it's done um, so all knowing what time you have to serve really dictates the whole flow of it all you know like i might have to start prepping certain items a week beforehand or 30 minutes before service you know because it takes either we're marinating me or we're preparing certain stuff we're prepping now the seventh thing to consider which is okay you know like it's it's okay if you don't have is having an expediter essentially the holding time of all of their stuff which is very i'm not gonna say it's like a useless position or a very it's a, it's a very overseeable position you know just an expediter there being like okay i need this this and this for these tables you know like obviously you want that right but if you don't have it it's okay it's not the end of the world you know now i can't do the catering event because i don't have an expediter you be the expediter you know you figure it out what you need how you need it how long this stuff is going to hold for and it just basically ties into everything beforehand you know another thing i highly recommend you consider is getting an accurate count of the guest now i know that this isn't entirely possible and entirely achievable right like you can't get an accurate number especially if you got the vip and there's certain people that don't show up but i say you really get it written in contract of how many people at least an estimate of how many people are going to show up because if you if you get that number you write down in the contract beforehand you go before you even make the food and before you prepare anything you know you get it written in, in in a contract they can't deny you like oh no i said 105 people but the contract only says 85 you know so now you have 25 people who aren't eating you know 20 people who aren't eating and they're gonna try to blame you for that and they're gonna try to underpay you for that or not pay you at all because you messed up but it's written in the contract that it's only 85 people that are gonna show up you know so like the most you probably have to feed is 90 people you know so that's why i get it written clearly in the contract of how many people are gonna show up you know, even if you have to estimate a little bit above that, that's why I have that 10 to 15% cushion that I was talking about previously in like the size of the party, you know, like that, that's why I told you guys then like figure out the size of the party, but now you have it written in a contract to know how many people you are serving, to know how many, to how much, to know how much food you had to buy, you know, now, now you know how much food to buy. Now you know that you're not going to waste a lot of items because now you have a head count, a specific 
head count of how many people are going to show up. And then the next thing is going to tie in to the same um, to one of the previous ones that I gave you guys before already is any special requests. You know, I would ask them if there's any special requests that they have or anything that they that they need extra from you. Right. Like we're not only in we are only in the food business, but we do we do we do accommodate for other stuff, you know, like do they need ice or vegetable carvings? You know, do they need a floral bouquet? Are they going to need equipment? Are they going to need the utensils, the, the plates, the glasses? Are they going to need all that stuff? Do I need to provide that stuff? Or are you guys already going to have all that? Like, it's important to get all this, all these little tiny details that a lot of people oversee. Like, oh, they're just going to have plates and they won't have plates. Now you got to figure it out last second. And it's just, it's just a headache. You know, you don't want, you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. So it's better beforehand consider all these things before you get to that event and you're screwed you know you're like oh damn now, now what do i do you know you look like an idiot you look like you don't know what you're doing and the last thing i say you should consider is the, their floor planning you know ask to see their floor planning or how they think everything's going to be arranged this way you know how to set everything up all of like if you need to, if we're doing buffet style now we need to know where we're going to place all the shafers and all the stuff for the buffet beforehand so this way we're more prepared everything's about being prepared organized and being ready for a just in case you know now if you don't see their floor plan it's not the end of the world it's not like oh no no i can't do it but now you don't know how much equipment you need right now, now you don't know how much you can take because now you might take too much and now there's not enough space you know um now they only give you this tiny space to put all your stuff in and you don't you don't have enough room this basically just dictates the zoning arrangement you know it's, that's all it really is just knowing where to place your stuff knowing knowing where everything's gonna go knowing the flow if it's a buffet where the where the tables are sit where the tables are at where everyone's seated at um so this way you could dictate with the way that the line goes the way that it flows you know it's not going to be all all everyone on, all on top of each other and now you're screwed you know now you don't know what to do everything is a mess and it just it just helps with the flow of everything now those are my 10 things for you guys to consider when catering and buffeting you know by no means am i the best you know i'm not i'm not the best cook out there i'm not the best chef or as i would like to call it an overpaid cook i'm i'm not the best um but i have done quite a bit to know and i've messed up quite a, quite a bit to know well you know what to expect you know this is just i'm just trying to help you guys out I'm trying to make sure that you guys don't make those mistakes even though sometimes you know it's good to make those mistakes because then we learn right but this is just me trying to help you guys avoid those little tiny details that you probably don't think of but yeah, if you guys like the video and you guys like Talking Chef, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down here below. It really helps out a lot. Um, I also am posting on Instagram and TikTok. Um, my TikTok's sort of different. Um, I do answer a lot of questions on there about, I do answer a lot of questions there that people ask me in the comments. You know, I do, I do try to get to all of you guys. Um, so go ahead and follow me on those two if you guys would like. I'll leave the link in the description below and tell me what's up tell me you guys came from youtube and then you know we'll talk but i'll see you guys then i'll see you guys next time when we talk chef right peace out guys peace